Good morning, everyone. How's your day? So, today we're going to mark some papers. Uh, actually, one of the most difficult jobs of a lecturer. Fortunately for us, we have a, an assistant that is uh, help assisting us in uh, marking the papers. So these papers have been marked already. So I'm just going to uh, do a random, you know, check of how the students are doing. At the same time, I can also tally the scores. Okay. So that's it. That's how we do it here. Marking is one of the most difficult things to do at the end of the semester. Then after marking, we need to key in the marks and then a decision has to be made. There are some students are whose marks are at the borderline. You know, as a lecturer, it's another mm, dilemma whether to pass or to fail the student. Mm. There are many things to consider. Uh, whether to, to pass or to fail a student. Alright, so uh, we have checked our email already, so let's just uh, do a little of marking. So I'm just writing first the question papers, the question number, the students that uh, answered, like this. So question one, two, and four. Then later I'm going to tally the marks. Okay. Fortunately, we have only about uh, 30 students in this class. This exam was taken last year. And uh, we are supposed to submit the marks already this month because we're going to have our academic board to examine the marks, whether to approve or not to approve the results of a particular unit or units, okay? So that is our academic board. So this exam is... Uh, Composed of one, two, three, and four questions. Uh, question one is uh, compulsory. Um, and then afterwards, the students are asked to answer another two questions. Any, any two questions among three. Question two, question three, question four. But question one is compulsory. All right, so the total marks would be 20 marks for question 1, 20 marks for question 2, 20 marks for question 3, and 20 marks for question 4. So if they answer three questions, they should get 60 marks. Okay. Another difficult thing to do in marking is the penmanship, the writing of the students, okay? While you're trying to understand what they're trying to, to tell you in the exam, you, you struggle also sometimes to, to read their penmanship. Now, uh, in the graduate program, Hi Jocelyn, hi Epi, how are you? Hi Donnie, shout out to all of you. Simio, how are you, Buana? Babi, Pinsan, kumusta? Nelry, shout out. Alright, so the kind of questions that we normally ask in the graduate program. Uh, not so much in terms of recall and understanding. 
we give questions that require analysis, synthesis, judgment, and evaluation. So you see, higher level of learning, recall and understanding are somewhat at the lower level form of learning. So we ask questions that would require them to analyze, to synthesize, to judge, to evaluate, okay? So question one, six marks, and then four marks. So this one got 10 marks for question one. For question two, five, two, ten, and ten. So again, 10 marks. So in total, he got 30 out of 60, at least 50%, okay? So this student got 30 out of 60, which is 50%. Uh, passing in the graduate program is 50%, actually. But that will not also determine his or her final grade because we have also coursework. We have continuous assessment tests. We have uh, exercises, we have group works as well. Of course, very important in the graduate program, we also include uh, class participation. As a participant-centered, you know, lecturer or facilitator, I really give uh, consideration to the quality of participation of my students okay so every meeting after each class you know each student has a name tag and they are really positioned assigned a seat in the classroom what i normally do after each class i would record the partic the quality of participation of each student okay and then i will uh, note those kind of participations and yeah it's about five five percent or ten percent of their final marks the level of participation now one thing to notice or realize is that students a student cannot participate unless he or she has read the case okay uh, we have to remember that as a participant centered facilitator uh, I normally assign cases for each class and students have to read, analyze, and prepare for the class, okay? And uh, certainly you cannot, he or she cannot participate if he or she has not read the case. All right. So this is question one, that's seven and eight, that's 15 out of 20. Question 2, 5, and then 6, that's 11, and then question 4, 5, and then 6, another 11. So this student got 37 out of 60, much better than the other one, than the first. So, yeah, so... To teach at the graduate's level is very fulfilling, very uh, challenging as well. Uh, maybe I, ha I have mentioned already in the past about the quality of our students in the graduate program. They must have a first class or second class honors in their first degree. And they must, they must have worked three to five years in the industry, right? In the MBA they should have minimum of i think three years managerial experience not only work experience but managerial experience so imagine the level of discussion that we have in class so although i've been teaching in the mba program for many years okay and maybe i have used the same case many times already in the in the past but the same thing i still need to read and prepare 
the same case. All right. And why is that? It's because, you see, we are dealing with different kinds of students. And based on the qualifications that I have stated, I've given, I said a while ago, you can never anticipate, you know, what they will bring in, in the discussion. Okay? So, you, I really have to read the case time and again. Okay? If a student will prepare, say, one hour or two hours for, cake, for each case, me, I will prepare for four or five hours. Because of that uh, reality, you will never know what the student will bring in the discussion. Considering the fact that they have years and years of experience in the industry. Okay? So if they're going to set this in class, I have to, you know, uh, know exactly what is the next question to ask, okay? You know, as a case facilitator, uh, I'm sort of a conductor in an orchestra, okay? So I orchestrate the discussion in class. Sometimes I play the role of a devil's advocate just to challenge how far the student has really gone into his or her analysis preparation in, 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 in the case, of the case rather. So uh, I learned these techniques, I learned these tricks, I learned this uh, methodology at Harvard Business School. We are lucky in 2006 we were sent to Harvard Business School to learn on how to facilitate a case and then in 2008 I went back again to Harvard Business School to learn about uh, uh, delivering information services, which is, you know, uh, very specific now to our uh, field of expertise, field of area of expertise, which is in information systems and operations management, okay? So we went to Harvard twice, in 2006 and 2008. Also in 2005, we were also sent to South Africa again on how to use cases. And then in 2000 and, uh, was it in 2007? Yes, there is a famous uh, case writer who came to Kenya. I think he is from uh, Richard Ivy, Ivy School, Business School in Canada. So he came to Strathmore University and he taught us on how to write cases. Oh yeah, so lucky for us. We are fortunate to have uh, attended those kind of training programs. So we have two cases. We have published many cases already. We have two cases that we have submitted in, in, in Europe. Uh, we have been lucky. Two of the cases that we submitted in Europe, they won some awards. Not really the first prize, but at least we have third prize, by the way, third prize, among thousands of cases submitted on those two different years, okay? Uh, we have so many business schools, by the way, in Africa and in the world. So, among thousands of, you know, submissions, cases submitted for those competitions, we were, we got third place in in both situation, in both cases, third place. We hope in the future we can write more cases. Well, anyway, I'm still uh, here. So question four, seven, and eight. Wow, this guy is good. Fifteen out of twenty. Question two, we got seven and six, thirteen. And question one. We get four, eleven. Okay. Total of eight, nine, thirty-nine out of sixty. All right. Uh, seven per seventy percent of sixty is what forty-two. Question one is fourteen. 
question. Four, six, and six. That's twelve. Question three, six and six. That's twelve. Okay. That's thirty-eight. Question one. You got eight. That's 37. I'll go 60. So, yeah, I'll make another video later. Uh, yesterday, yeah, let me just not preempt that video. So, yeah, we will finish this. Uh, I'm going for a short meeting at in around 9:30. Uh, thank you for being with me guys. Uh, wish me luck in marking. I still have one more and another. Okay, so marking, marking, marking. Good, so that's it for today. Tumsifu Yesu Christo. Melele na melele amina. Be blessed everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.